name is Catherine. I'm going to be your artist tonight. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. I'm turning up my volume. But obviously, we're going to be doing this awesome Eye of the Tiger painting tonight, which is going to be a lot of fun. And you guys, like Nancy said, should all have an already traced out canvas, which is going to make our lives a lot easier. And I'm hoping you guys all have some paint with you. Tonight, I am using just white, black, red, and yellow. We're gonna mix our own orange and it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then we also should all have three paintbrushes. Should have a big one, a medium one, and a small one. And what I want you guys to do, I hope you also got your all um, a glass of water. You'll need a glass of water if you don't have one so you can keep your paintbrushes in there when you're not using them and to clean off the excess paint. Um, so when you're not using those paintbrushes, I want you guys to keep them in the water and I guess let's go ahead and just get right into this. So if you guys are all ready, what I want you to do is we're gonna go right into these black stripes to start. So we're gonna fill in the black stripes and you can use whatever brush you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my medium paintbrush and I'm gonna take it out of the water and I'm gonna go directly into the black and I'm gonna fill in all these stripes that you see right here. And to make it easier to tell where you're going, start with the one where the eye is going to be. And just fill them all in really nicely. So go ahead and get those stripes filled in and then I will come check in on everybody on the computer. This just wanted to give you a couple tips while you're painting. Um, I find it, if I load my paintbrush up with a lot of paint, so I take my paintbrush and I dip it on one side and then tap it on the other. So if you can tell, I have a lot of paint on there. I don't know if it's gonna focus. But I have a lot of paint on there. And then what I do is I take it to the line and I just pull it straight down and I don't worry so much about filling it in. I'm just creating that nice smooth line. And then I do it to the other side. Let me get over here. And I pull it down on the other side of that line. And it just goes on super smooth. You're not spending a lot of time, you know, coloring it in. And you'll get a really, really nice crisp line by focusing on that outside corner.
So another recommendation for you guys, um, if you'd like when you're doing this, you can take wherever your stripe is, take the paint to go off the side onto the corners of your canvas right here, take it off. So then when it's finished, it's gonna look, have a much more finished quality to it. And it'll also really look nice when you replace that family photo on the wall with this beautiful painting that you're making today. So go ahead, make sure you get the, the corners with whatever color you're working with, paint them so it looks like the painting is going off of the corners of the canvas. And guys, I really just hope, it's kind of strange that I can't see you and work directly with you, but I sure hope that everyone is really enjoying themselves. I know that painting for me is definitely a very therapeutic release to let go of all the crazy things we're going through in the world and at home. You know, it's really nice. You just stop thinking about everything, put some paint down and see what comes out. So I really hope you guys are enjoying enjoying yourself and you're relaxing and maybe having a drink, who knows.
All right, artists. So there's a couple more things I want to let you know. Um, when you're creating these black striped lines, I don't want you to think that they need to be perfect by any means, because if you can see, looking up at this up close, we're going to be going over it and creating some hair. So the lines do not need to be perfect by any means, because we're going to be going over it at the very end to really give it that detail of the hair on the tiger. So don't worry about it too much. Just get the black in. So I just wanted to give you guys a few pointers while you're finishing up on your stripes. Um, if your paint starts to dry, I recommend taking your paintbrush and dipping it in a tiny bit of water. And don't use a whole lot because you want to be able to add the water to it. You don't want to be able to take it away because the more water you have in there, it's going to actually take the paint off the canvas. And we definitely don't want that. But out here in Colorado with our dry climate, it's really, really easy to dry up those paints real quick. And then they're not going to smooth onto your canvas as nicely as you'd like them to. So whenever you see that happening, just use a tiny bit of water and you should be good. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do the eye. And what I want us to start with is the basis of the eye. And I don't know, can you guys see on your canvas, if I show this real close, see how there's the light or the lines right here? That's the only area that we're going to paint out to. We want to leave this little area right here white still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really, really, really clean off my medium paintbrush. And I'm going to dab it on some paper towels to make sure all that excess paint and water is off of there so it doesn't run. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it, my paintbrush, in just a tiny bit of white. And I mean not a lot at all. As you can see on my paintbrush, I don't have a lot of paint on there at all. And I'm going to start right where the iris would be. And I'm going to kind of go in a circle and work my way out. And then with that same paintbrush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow. And I mean just a tiny bit. You can always add more. But as you see, I really have no yellow Which paint brush? on it. And so once you have that yellow on that paintbrush, we're going to start kind of on the outside of the eyeball and work our way towards the end. And we want to work it into that white that we put in on, on there and really make it lighten up. And if you need to add more yellow or more white, that's totally up to you, whatever you're comfortable with or whatever desired effect you want. You might want a lighter color eye or you might want a more bright, vibrant, powerful yellow eye. I'm adding just a tiny bit more white to it, especially up at the top. And also guys, I don't know if you can tell, but I am painting over where the iris is gonna be because you can still see where that circle is gonna be. So we will be able to go over it with black, but by doing this, it's going to give it a really nice rounded effect around where the iris will be. Or the pupil, excuse me. So fill out that eye. And like I said, I left these little corners of the eye white. So make sure you do that. All right, so now what we're gonna do, that we've got that base down, we're gonna make it a little more orange and add some of these details to the iris of the eye. So I'm gonna start with that same paintbrush. We're still working with our medium paintbrush and I'm gonna dab it in a tiny bit of red now, just a tiny, tiny bit. And if you have too much on your paintbrush, all you have to do is dab it on your palette. And so you have a very, very little amount on there. And so to start on the bottom of the eye is where I'm gonna start working this red into and it's gonna create an orange. And I'm gonna go back and forth between the red and the yellow. So I can really get that nice yellow or orange effect, excuse me. So I'm gonna dip it into a tiny bit of yellow and mix it off to the side and go over that again until I get more of an orange look.
and just go on the bottom corner of that eye. Okay, and then once you've got that part done, we're essentially gonna keep working with an orange base. So mix a little of your yellow and your red together. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of lightly pull up from the bottom of our iris with just a tiny bit of paint on our paintbrush. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paintbrush and turn it up and down. And you're just gonna do some sharp lines going, okay. Going straight up into that iris. No, it was on the computer. So work with that orange going straight up, doing some straight lines. Just like that. I don't know if you can really see it. I'll give you a close up. And then what you can do to really make that eye pop is make a little bit darker of an orange. So I took a little yellow and a little red on my paintbrush and I'm mixing it off to the side right here. And so it's not completely red, but it's got a good dark color to it. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a sharp edge on my paintbrush. So I'm tapping it twice here, pulling up tapping and pulling. So I've got a really nice sharp edge. So then I can take it to the canvas and get some really good definition with those straight lines that are going straight into that pupil. And then I'll take my paintbrush and I'll tap it and pull, tap it and pull so I could get that sharp angle to it again. and bring that really bright orange in there. And if you'd like, you can even go straight red, just a tiny bit of red, and do a few of those red lines in there as well. All right, so here's a close up of what I've got. So this next step is just really, really, really simple. We're gonna keep working with that medium paintbrush, but we're gonna clean it off really, really good. And we're gonna dab it on our paper towel to get that excess paint off. And all we're gonna do is go back into our black and fill in our pupil there. Pretty simple step. Only other thing we've got to do to that eye is the outline right here on the outside of the eyeball. And to make it a little bit easier, I highly recommend switching to your small brush. And if your paint is too thick, just a reminder, if your paint is too thick, dip it in a tiny bit of water 
and mix it in there and it'll make the paint, especially where we're doing a little bit more finer details, it will make it go on so much easier and give you a much straighter, skinnier line. So all I'm gonna do with my small paintbrush now is I'm gonna start at the bottom of the eyeball and I'm gonna outline it up. And make sure when you're doing this that you don't press your hand into that fresh paint of your pupil because you're gonna get paint everywhere. I mean, it doesn't, it's fine if you get it all over your hand, but you don't want it to stick down onto your painting and get little black spots everywhere. So make sure you keep your hand lifted off the canvas where that fresh black paint is. And outline that eye. Just like that. All right, so now the eye is almost done. We do have a few more details, but I'm gonna wait towards the end to do them. As you can see, we've got the white in the eyes that's gonna give it the reflection. Um, so we're gonna finish that on the end so then we can make sure our eye is completely dry before moving on and before messing up it up completely. So we'll just give it some time and we're gonna start working with some fur. This part's going to be really, really fun, and you can be as loose as you want with it. And that's what I really, really like about doing paintings like this with a tiger and some fur. You can just really create a realistic painting without a lot of effort. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to move on to our big paintbrush. All right? And what we're going to do is that we're going to be using a technique called dry brushing. So what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna take our large paintbrush and we're gonna dip it in a little bit of white. Okay? And then I'm gonna take the other side and dip it in a little bit of black. And with the black, you don't need a lot. Black's gonna go really far because it's a very pigmented color, so it's gonna overpower everything. So anytime you're working with the black, I want you guys to be very cautious about how little you use. So once you've got the paint on your paintbrush, I want you to find a clean area on your palette or your plate and just start kind of dabbing it until you get a lot of that excess paint off. And you're gonna be slowly creating a gray. And if yours is too dark, like mine, as you can see, mine's really dark, go pick up some more white and start dabbing it over there in the corner until we've got like a nice light gray. And you don't want a lot of paint on your paintbrush at all. That's the key about dry brushing. So once you have a tiny bit on there, I need to put mine on the table to really dab that paint out. But once you've got that, then we're gonna start underneath the eye right here. And all we're gonna do is lightly tap it and pull in all different directions. And then go pick up some more of that white or black, the colors that you've picked, and dab them back in that gray area. And take it to the canvas and just really, really lightly pull. So as you can see, I'll give you a close up very, very little paint and you're just pulling them off and it's okay that it's going over the black lines because like I said, we're creating fur. So then I'll just go back into my white, pick up a little white, dab it in that gray area, pick up a little black if I need it a little darker and just go and pull it around. And we're going to be doing this white gray color under the whole entire eye and through this whole bottom part. And then we'll move on to the top of the eye. And you definitely want some areas to be darker than others. So if you have a little bit more black, that's totally fine. You 
You just want to make sure you don't have a lot of paint on your paintbrush. I can't stress that enough. That's the secret to the dry brushing. And a very light touch. And the nice thing about you guys working at home is you can spend as little or as much time on each area. And um, the cool thing about working with acrylic paints is since they dry so fast, they really give you creative freedom to really explore what you can do because they're a layering paint. So you can put a lighter coat on the bottom, let that dry, and then do the same technique over the top with a little bit darker coat. So you're going to get some shadows and some highlights in there and get a really, really nice realistic effect. And so you guys can do that at home and not be rushed to get out of here. So after we're finished with this tonight, you can still keep working on it until your heart is totally happy with what your outcome is. So um, I really encourage you guys to just take your time with it. Like I said, I'll be around. So if you do have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And whenever you guys are ready, I want you to start following the same technique up into this top brow right here over the top of the tiger's eye. So whenever you're ready, start doing that. And as you can see, it is a little bit lighter right here over the very front of the eye. So make sure you keep this area lighter when you're working with it and then add a little bit more color or black as you're working your way towards the back of it.
So while we're painting, I'll give you guys a few interesting facts about our studio here. Um, we are sipping and painting Hamden, located at the Hamden location. Obviously, we get asked a lot if the other sipping and painting is owned by the same owner, and it is not. We are a locally owned business here in Denver, and all of our artwork is completely created by our local art artists who work here. So that's really cool. Most of the other places are already created for the artist to paint for each class. So we've got a lot of creative freedom. We really, really enjoy it. And we also offer Bob Ross classes occasionally. Things are a little bit different now, obviously due to the lovely pandemic, but they are still available. If you are interested, you can email sipping and painting at hamden.com or at gmail.com with any questions. We also are selling paint kits right now. So you could paint along with our YouTube classes and other Zoom classes, or you can come in and buy a face mask tie dyeing kit, which is really, really neat. So keep that in mind if you guys are interested in something like that. If you are, you can let me know and I can get you set up and get you more information. Another little tip for you guys um, while you're working with this white and gray, essentially, if you find yourself not being able to get a darker or a lighter gray, it's just because of all the buildup on your paintbrush. So all you have to do is take your paintbrush and clean it off with your um, paper towel. You don't have to get it perfect, but getting that extra excess off will really, really help keep the colors varied if you know what I mean so now that I did that I'm going to go back into a little bit of my white so I can get some lighter areas going again and just like that we've got some much lighter gray going on and then it'll continue to get dark again as we work with that black
I did forget that over here on the very bottom corner, there's a little bit more white in between these two stripes down here, about halfway up. So go ahead and do your white and gray right there once you get to that. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. If you guys wanna jump ahead, if you're there, you can do the exact same thing with the orange, which is basically just the red and yellow mixed together. And I'll show you some tech techniques too here just in a second. So make sure you get that white and that gray down off on the side, and then we'll move on to some color. Okay, artists, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the orange. And I'm gonna use that same big paintbrush, but I'm gonna clean it off really, really well. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna dip one side in my red and one side in my yellow. So my paintbrush looks like that. I've got red on one side and yellow on the other. And then I'm gonna do the same thing that I have been doing and I'm gonna tap it. And then we're gonna just start wherever and start dry brushing your hair on there. And yeah, I want you guys to fill up the entire rest of the area with the orange hair. And I also wanna let you guys know, cause um, I believe everyone on tonight is from the Denver area. And so if you guys are looking for some original artwork, I wanna let you know that we have a whole table full here at the studio at 6300 um, Hamden Avenue. So if you guys would like some original paintings that are all done by the artists here at Sipping and Painting, keep that in mind. Um, they're a really, really good affordable price. You can get two for 25 or one for 13. So if you wanna come in and pick up another paint kit or a mask kit, you can take a look at our painting table in the back and maybe find a really beautiful painting to take home for a birthday gift or for your sunroom, you know, whatever your heart desires. Just keep us in mind.
All we're doing, it's very simple. We're gonna take our medium brush and we're gonna dip it in the black and we're gonna create those hair strokes just on this back side of all the black areas. So we're gonna do the exact same thing that we were doing with the medium brush, a tiny bit of paint, and we're gonna go on the back side and just create some hair on the back uh, side of each of your black stripes that you created. I see. And that's gonna pretty much complete it. So I'll let you guys do this and then I'll come back on and give you my closing remarks. And also you guys can um, sign your work when you're finished, if you'd like, make it a complete painting. Is that okay, so all we're gonna do now is the reflection and then it's gonna be finished. So I'm gonna clean off my medium paintbrush really, really well. So we're gonna be working with the white. This is a really simple, quick, easy step and I'll get you guys out of here. So I'm gonna go directly into my white with my medium paintbrush. I'm not using a whole lot and I'm just gonna create a little reflection, a little oval that goes over the top of the pupil and off the side of the iris. We're just gonna do one there and it doesn't need to be completely solid white. It's gonna show through the eyeball and give it a really nice effect. And then there's gonna be one going the opposite direction right underneath it. And then for an added bonus, you can do a couple little highlights going up and down with those other stripes that you put in your pupil. And that's gonna be it. So I really wanna thank you guys for joining us tonight at Sipping and Painting Hamden. We really enjoyed having you. And um, we really hope you consider coming back and doing more classes with us. If you go to our website, you can see online all of our classes. We have a few in-studio classes, so you can actually come here and get the full on effect. Um, or you could do our Zoom classes still. Like I said, we do have painting kits available. We have face mask kits available and other face masks. Um, we have a lot of original artwork for sale. So keep us in mind. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed yourself and you have a great evening. Thanks for joining me.